champion to talk to you about week seven of the Disc Golf Valley Players Tour. We have all three real life courses this week and Northern Breeze. It's gonna be tough. Uh, I wanna go through some of the hardest holes from each course with some tips that'll hopefully save you all from having a breakdown. Let's check it out. Okay, hole five on the back nine of Emporia Country Club. This was the most difficult hole in the game for a time, uh, the hardest hole in the game to get a birdie on. Um, I've had multiple plays on this. I've shared different kinds of plays on this hole. At one point I was going to the right side. Um, I do think the forehand is a little bit more forgiving. You have more room for either turning it over or not turning it over enough. So that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm lining up on this tee pad here and doing over a disc of Anheuser. Again, I think the miss here is to overturn it a little bit because you just push further down the fairway. And ideally you're going to kind of stay on the left side of the fairway. I think it opens it up, it's a little safer. I'm about to show you here, if you try and go around the right side, there's just more danger. There's a lot more luck involved. Uh, trying to go air shot, you know, you're contending with these trees. If you overturn it, you're really hoping you get through the fence. And here I'm just kind of showing, you know, you hit a tree, I was lucky to not go out of bounds there. Um, if you aren't to the left of this kind of middle tree, I'm about to show you, you can go really low. And I'm using a water skip rive here just for the ground play, but um, it's worth practicing to be honest because it's a little goofy, but uh, it does get you in position for a birdie if you're a little further back. Okay, so hole number 10 of the beast, hole number one of the back nine, this is a par four that I think people tend to overcomplicate. Uh, you can go real big off the tee, but you risk either getting stuck up against a fence or going long. I like to just take a sapphire and put it out here straight. I'm aiming at this tree and, you know, just, uh, I know it's not gonna go long. I know it's not gonna fade left. And then from there, just take the same exact disc, take a little bit of power off and I'm really trying to just hyzer it in, um, hopefully avoiding these little trees, but you never know where you're gonna get. Um, and you know, in the wind even, you can do the same exact thing. Just push it out there. Um, and then on the second shot, you can disc up. Um, I went Pioneer here just to fight the wind a little bit, uh, but a Sapphire again would be perfect. Um, you don't have to go big here, basically. And I think it takes a lot of danger out of play. So consider it, see if it works for you. Hole two on the beast back nine. This hole's really tough. Um, I think the move is to lay up short. And that is what I always do here. I always try and lay up short. I'm aiming with my glide sapphire at this tree. I'm trying to land like right by it or as close as I can without going into the water there. So I'm powering it down just a little bit, uh, a roll, sapphire would also work here. I'm leaving myself about 80 to 90 feet. It can get awkward with that tree right there, but for the most part, it's a par at worst. Hole three on Maple Hill front nine. It's such a tight fairway. Uh, some late flip disc is really what you would want for this. But that's so hard to shape. So, you know, whenever I have a tight line or gap to hit, I usually like to keep it simple. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm going forehand with a glide roll rive. I'm aiming kind of low, like second chevron at the base of these trees and letting the natural uh, turn and fade shape that corner hoping the roll attribute sticks or I hit a tree kind of like I did here. And then, you know, there's all these trees, so you may have to make an awkward putt, um, but at least you have a look, which is really what I'm hoping to get here. A par is not great, but it's okay. Um, I'm gonna show you here, even in another wind, uh, you can do the same thing. There are these stumps in the fairway that if you're aiming too low, you won't clear. So I'm trying to keep a height consistent and then uh, yeah, that roll attribute just helps you stick up on the green versus sliding all the way down. I've seen some people go forehand, uh, flippy driver, that can work, but you can slide all the way down. Uh, the glide roll is just consistent and my favorite way to attack it. Northern Lights 3, it is really gnar. It's the Frozen Valley 2 of this course. It's just 
real tough to get a birdie sometimes. Um, I really like the forehand here I'm about to show you. I know I shared a glide fade rive line earlier. Uh, I don't have that in the bag. So I'm going sapphire here on a forehand, aiming kind of low. And I'm really trying to just keep the disc over the fairway the whole time. That way, if I do mess up, uh, I'm staying in bounds at least. And then the ranges here, I change discs, but if I'm over uh, 630 feet, I'm gonna go glide sapphire here. And I'm giving it width, cause I know it's gonna swing in and more often than not, I slide off the right side of this fairway here. So again, giving it some width, um, practicing the approach here, I think is really important. And then, you know, the, the putt is about 20 feet downhill. So I take off just that much power to get it in there. All right, so this is week seven. The end is near. These courses are real tough. So if you play clean, you can expect to make up some strokes on people. Uh, I hope to see you all up on the leaderboards. Good luck, stay safe. And if you have a line different than mine, I'd love to check it out. Tell me about it in the comments or drop the video.